And now, an exclusive sneak preview of a recent X Talks webinar, DNA Encoded Library Screening, The Art of Campaign Design. So first of all, very briefly, I'm going to introduce our platform. So our platform is comprised of individually chemically synthesized libraries and one molecule from one of those libraries is represented in the center of this screen. What you can see here is that the small molecule that is encoded is represented on the left side and this is what we call a three cycle library. It's comprised of three building blocks, green, red and blue. And because of the way that these libraries are synthesized, there's an encoding relationship that is established between the tags that, again, green, red, and blue shown on the right-hand side. So each green tag encodes a unique building block at position one, the green building block. The same is true for the red, and the same is true for the blue. And so with a relatively small number of building blocks and, and, and in the relatively efficient process, we can take, for example, 100 green building blocks, 100 red building blocks, 100 blue building blocks, uh, and by a process of split and pool and individual chemical reactions in, in individual wells and individual encoding events with specific oligonucleotide tags, we can ultimately get out of those 300 building blocks a library of a million compounds, 100 by 100 by 100, represented by million unique oligonucleotide tag sequences, the, the, the catenated tag sequences uh, as shown on the right. The advantage of this methodology is that compounds and libraries are screened as a mixture and therefore very large numbers of compounds can be made and screened in parallel and large split sizes are supported by our variant of the technology up to split sizes of 10,000 and that means that we can achieve numerically large libraries even with only two diversity steps. And for the two cycle libraries as we call them which only have a pair of building blocks displayed obviously the properties there are more attractive because the average mass of those compounds is lower very often in the high 300s or low 400s. Uh, so the diversity that exists within the collection of all our libraries has two sources. Uh, one are the building blocks that are used to construct them. Uh, on the left of the slide, you can see a representation of the over 40,000 building blocks that we have here in the facility that I sit in right now as I speak to you. And it is the these building blocks are present in large numbers in our collection, but some are easier to access than others. And so we have, for example, large numbers of amines and carboxylates and lesser numbers of the other categories as shown on the right. The other source of chemical diversity are the chemical reactions that we use to assemble these building blocks. There are a wide range of on DNA synthesis example chemistries reported in the literature listed on the right hand side of this slide. But we have a significant effort and have done over the entirety of the company's history to develop our own proprietary chemistries. These are chemistries that haven't been reported in the literature for on DNA applications. And we use proprietary chemistries in the vast majority of the libraries that we make here at XGEM. And in fact, in the last six years, something like three quarters of the libraries that we've synthesized have contained proprietary chemistries. And what do those chemistries look like? Well, they, they, they look like the compounds or they make the compounds that are shown on the right here. So these are examples of what we call atom efficient cyclization chemistries. Uh, these utilize classes of building blocks that are available in large numbers, principally amines or carboxylates or, or classes that can be made from those classes. And they assemble these building blocks together in a way that is atom efficient and has the, the least number of invariant atoms uh, in the resultant chemically synthesized encoded compounds. And so what you see on the right there, that, uh, that many of the atoms in the cores of these libraries are derived from the building blocks themselves, and therefore the mass of these libraries is kept down, and therefore the, the attractiveness of the compounds is increased. Um, putting it all together, if you look at randomly chosen compounds from our encoded libraries and you plot them out in a, a principal component analysis plot as are shown on the right, and if you direct your attention to the, the four individual plots at the bottom there, you can see as a comparator we have compounds randomly chosen from PubChem and we plotted them out in this plot and you see those in black. And then below that you'll see one of our library decks in purple and you can see that 
that this deck explores the same chemical space as is represented in black. And so if you take our library decks as a whole and apply them to your drug discovery projects, then you will be broadly screening across the entirety of chemical space as is represented by the compounds in PubChem. Uh, to the right there in yellow, you'll see that our macrocyclic libraries fall outside of that space to some extent. And then you see our other deck, our exclusive deck, the Delcor deck, representing it in blue because it contains the macrocycles. It, it spans a, a broader region of chemical space than the Delflex de deck does alone. And then lastly, how do we use these libraries to actually discover the molecules within them that have the characteristics that we want? Well, we take the libraries in solution. We, we combine the libraries together to generate library decks. We, we add protein in solution. We give that mixture an opportunity to equilibrate. And then we capture the protein on an affinity matrix. And any associated library members will be co-captured. We then stringently wash away the library members that do not bind, and then we elute the library members that do bind. Typically, we put this through two sequential uh, selection rounds, so the output of the first round goes into the second round, uh, and then ultimately, by PCR and sequencing, we can have a very deep sampling of the population, the output population, and by comparing that with the input population, we can determine which compounds are enriched and therefore likely to bind to the target. So that's how our platform works. Uh, I'm now going to introduce the concept of parallel screening, which is something that we have reported on in the past and have published on. To view the entirety of this webinar, visit the link in the description and register on xtalks.com completely free of charge.